In order to understand these rules and guidelines in our toolbox, we've got to understand some basics about sentence structure. This could be very complex, but we're going to reduce it down to a three-part simple process. First, we're going to talk about our subjects and identify our subjects and what rules and guidelines help us have powerful subjects. Then, we're going to talk about our verbs and we're going to identify how do we write clear, strong, active verbs that convey powerful action in the sentence. And then, to simplify the rest, we're simply going to lump all the other elements into the category that we'll call complements. So in other words, our sentences are divided into subject, verb, and complement. And all of our rules will fall into that, into one of those three categories. Now when you're looking at a sentence, let me put up a basic sentence and teach you how we first approach identifying the subject, the verb, and the complement. So remember, step one to figuring out these rules and guidelines is to identify the subject, the verb, and the complements. The first thing that you look for when you're uh, analyzing your sentence is the verb. You want to look for that first and you're going to underline it twice. Now, if you'll do this in your editing, in your writing, in, in whatever you're analyzing within your sentence, if you'll underline as you go, and we're gonna have you circle, we're gonna have you draw arrows, Really, at this minute level, it's going to help you be able to better understand all of these rules and guidelines. So we're going to underline twice the verb. And then you ask yourself, okay, what's happening? Well, something's getting bought. The next question to identify the subject is, who's doing this thing that's happening? So in other words, who's doing the buying? Well, clearly, it's John. I'm going to underline my subject once. So John is my subject, bought is the verb, and to simplify, we're simply going to say that everything else is complementary. Everything else is the complement. Now let me point something out. I might have two main subjects, or I might have two main verbs in the sentence. Again, first step, identify your main subject and identify your main verb. So let me add in a compound main subject. So in this sentence, I have two main subjects. I'm going to underline that main, both main subjects, Jane and John, and still have my main verb and still have all of the complementary information within the sentence. We might add in a secondary main verb. So now the sentence I've underlined both of my main subjects and both of my main verbs and I'll put that the squiggly line under all of the complementary information in the sentence. Now I'm ready to begin analyzing the sentence. Now the second point that I want to make about identifying main subjects and main verbs is that sometimes we'll have a secondary subject and a secondary verb. Looking at secondary subjects and secondary verbs and distinguishing those from main subjects and main verbs is really important when we begin to look at punctuation, agreement and reference, and other elements of, of rules and guidelines in our toolbox. So let me go ahead and add a secondary subject and a secondary verb for this sentence. Now, my main subjects, my main verbs, so my main subjects, Jane and John, and my main verbs, bought, delivered, didn't change. But I've added in, I've added in a, subordin a subordinating clause here after their manager issued the request. And what I want to point out, because I don't want you to get confused when you go, oh, here's a subject, here's a noun, must be a subject. That's not how we want to think. Because this subject is in a subordinating clause, it's not a standalone sentence, this is a secondary subject and a secondary verb. That's why I a dot underlined the secondary subject once and the secondary verb twice. Now being able to look at a sentence and underline 
and identify the main subject and the main verb and any secondary subjects and secondary verbs puts us in a perfect position to start using our tools in our toolbox and to start using punctuation and using all of the agreement and reference and other rules that we're going to give you in a way that will help you clarify your writing.